So today we're going to be talking about Austin McBroom versus Annie Song Game 2 Redemption or Repeat. We will find out April 22nd in the Kingpin Boxing I mean, in the Kingpin Boxing Tournament quarterfinals. Now a lot of people are saying that Annie Song Game is going to run through Austin McBroom like he did the first time. Five knockdowns Gibb had on Austin in their first fight which obviously suggests that Gibb is levels above Nick Broom. Or is he? There's a lot of factors to take into consideration about their first fight. So we're going to go over their first fight today. And I'm going to explain to you as a boxing nobody. <laughs> why Austin still can beat Annie Song Gibb. I mean the first thing to take into consideration is the fact that Austin did have COVID during this fight. Which is... I mean, I don't know what it's like to have COVID, but I've heard it's pretty bad, you know? So that could definitely take a toll on someone who is, you know, using their respiratory system immensely. I don't know, like, when I heard that he had COVID, I was like, oh, could it, that could just be an excuse. But, like, having a boxing match with COVID, I'm sure, would be pretty difficult. So this time around, Austin will not be sick whatsoever, I can assume. And... I mean, judging from that fact alone, we should get a better version of Austin McBroom, which definitely means that he won't get knocked down five times. There's just no way. Like, he, I know for a fact, will put up a much better fight than the first one. But the thing is, will he have such a good fight to the point where he'll actually beat Gibb? Or will Gibb still just be too powerful, too skilled? Like, it's a tough one to call, you know? I think the obvious choice is Gibb, but... Again, there's a few factors that we got to talk about here, so let's get into it. The first thing I noticed about this fight was that Austin was smiling quite a lot, which does tell me that he wasn't really taking Gibb that seriously. I don't know, maybe that's just like a, a thing he does. Maybe he is taking him seriously, but he does like to smile and kind of laugh. But why, why, would he, why would he laugh in a situation like this? I don't know. <laughs> but you do catch him smiling quite a fair bit. So did he just underestimate Gibb? Hmm. Not too sure. A big thing about Austin is that he always holds... Ooh. He always holds his right hand out. He likes to sort of keep Gibb at distance, you know what I mean? You'll see that a lot. Look. Then he comes in. Yeah, great. Knocks on Gibb in the first round. Now, I don't think it's fair to say that Gibb has a weak chin, but it's definitely not that strong. But we've been knowing this from the Jake Paul fight. But to be fair, I still didn't expect Gibb to get knocked down in this fight. You know, it's 2022. The, the Jake Paul fight was in 2020. I didn't think... Austin would cause that much of an issue for Gibb. So Austin clearly has power, and Gibb clearly has a bit of a wobbly chin. Austin again holding that right hand out, trying to measure Gibb. Oh, 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 oh! Look at him smiling at him again. Maybe it's like a bit of a, a nervous thing. Maybe it's like a, oh shit, we're in this, let's go. I don't know. Austin went for the uppercut and completely missed. And you'll find that during this fight, he did focus a lot on that uppercut and trying to land that. And that's one of Austin's problems, I would say. He tends to look for that one big shot. And he did it quite often to the point where Gibb could easily read him. You know, he could see the uppercut coming. If Austin gets more variety with his punches and becomes a bit more unpredictable, then he can beat Gibb. He was too predictable though here. Nice from McBroom there though. Look. He can't put the pressure on, but it wasn't enough to really do anything to Gibb. Look, he faked the uppercut there again. Tried it a second time. Looks at the clock. And a point that I haven't talked about is cardio. Obviously, cardio is very, very important. And that was a letdown for Austin. If he improves that cardio, then he can go far. He's got the par. If he gets his cardio up and he becomes a more unpredictable fighter, you know, includes more variety with his punches, then... He could be a problem for Annie Song Gibb, I'm telling you. Annie Song Gibb and I'm out! Peace! Like he's trying it again, he's trying it again, this uppercut for some reason. I don't know if, uh, if in training the uppercut was the key to success. For some reason, he thinks his uppercut is going to absolutely rock Gibb and end the fight. But he can't connect with that uppercut because Gibb keeps countering it or... He's able to avoid it. You know what it is? It's like Austin is definitely tired at this point. So he probably is looking to end the fight. He probably wants to get out of here. There's the first knockdown. And Austin is just at a point where he is kind of screwed. Like he can't really come back from this because his cardio isn't great. And Gibb is hitting harder shots 
as time goes by. Austin's still smiling though. I think this smile though is like, oh god. It's like, I'm fucked, but I'm gonna keep fighting. <laughs> so he gets knocked down again, nearly falls out of the ring this time, but he still stands up. And he still continues, which already is actually very respectful. Two knockdowns, two big shots, but he still wants to keep going. He's clearly got that willpower, but his body physically cannot carry him much further. So going into round four, Gid knows that he's close to winning this fight, so he can put that pressure on. He can let everything go, and he does big shots from Gib. Uppercut, hooks, everything, smacking him up, sends him down again. Unbelievable. So when Gib gets close to his opponent, and he gets to, he lets the hands fly, then he can be dangerous. But the thing is, if he tries that against someone with great defense, then it wouldn't really have the same effect. Austin's defense at this point is gone, which again refers back to cardio. He's just so tired. Oh my god. Gib knows he is mere moments away from winning this fight, so he is just putting all... Oh my god, yeah, he's so wobbly, look at him. Austin's on the way out again. But he still tries to land shots, he still tries to fight. This is crazy from Austin. <coughs> oh. McBroom's still taking bangs and still coming forward. But that's it. So the two biggest factors that Austin needs to improve on is cardio and defense. I think we can all agree on that, right? If he actually has great cardio and great defense going into this fight with Gibb for the second time around, then it could be a completely different story. On top of that, he won't have COVID. On top of that, he should hopefully have more variety with his punches and not just try and land that one big uppercut. If he fixes all of these mistakes, he can beat Gibb. Gibb isn't all that, I'm telling you. Yes, he showed some skill in the fight against Austin. He showed that he has power. He showed that he has good cardio as well. Gibb can go the, the distance. I'm pretty confident in that. But I don't know, like the fact that he got knocked down in the first round, just, it showed to me that Austin, if he had all the other attributes upgraded, then he could have put away Gibb. But I would love to know your thoughts and opinions about Austin versus Gibb too in the comments because it's going to be such a more interesting fight this time around and it's going to be a lot closer than I think a lot of people think and a lot of people realize. So I am very very excited for this fight, in fact it's the fight that I'm most excited for from the quarterfinals of the Kingpin tournament. I mean Jarvis versus Zanetti is going to be a banger as well, I did a video covering that fight if you want to check it out. But that is it for now, so drop a like on the video for me if you've enjoyed this one, subscribe if you're new for more influencer boxing content. Thank you all for watching. And I'll see you in the next one.